Hello, welcome to a quick video on Express Setup for the Cisco Industrial Ethernet switches. My name is Albert Mitchell, and I work as a technical marketing engineer in the Cisco's Industrial Networking Group. As you can see, Express Setup is a process for a day one Ethernet switch install. This is done instead of other processes such as plug and play or using your console to access the command line interface. A summary of what the video is gonna show. When we get into the screens where we're configuring the switch, there's a lot of questions that get asked about IP addresses, usernames, host names, DNS, SNMP, all that stuff. You need a plan. This switch is going into a network somewhere. Don't sit down without understanding what you need to configure. And then to start the whole express setup process, you insert this small object. We often say a paperclip like object. I'm going to use a paperclip. Then the one of the interfaces is going to start to blink. And this is where you connect your PC. Now on the IE3300 that I'm going to use in the video, port one slash three is going to blink. Now this may change depending upon the industrial switch that you're connecting with. For instance, on the IE 9300s, it'll be port 23 and not port three. So read your install guide, that'll tell you which port's going to blink. Once Express Setup is kicked off, now the Cisco switch will act as a DHCP server and it will serve an IP address to your laptop and then you're gonna point your browser on your laptop back to the switch's IP address. And then it's gonna bring up the screens for completing the day one process. And the goal is get this device connected to your network. These are the things you're gonna to need to have a plan for amongst others. So this is sort of the bare minimum, I would say, for having a plan. It's pretty simple to get the express setup process started. It works on a switch that doesn't have any configuration. Say for instance, if you take it right out of the box when it comes from manufacturing, it will have no configuration on it. You can also do a write erase, or you can do other methods to remove the startup configuration. But anyway, anytime it was the switch boots without a startup configuration and you're not doing plug and play and you're not using the console, you know, your express setup LED will start to blink. And this tells you that it's ready for you to invoke the express setup process. You insert your paperclip like object for two or three seconds. One of the ports will blink, in this case, port one slash three. You connect your PC. Um, one thing you can do is you can ping 192.168.1.254. That is the IP address that the switch assigns itself. Your PC will have a different IP address, but in the same subnet. And then you point your browser there. Right? This is important. The username is always admin, and the password is the serial number. And the serial number can be found on your switch itself. It's usually on a yellow on a sticker or somewhere on the box, you'll be able to find the serial number. And then there's four screens that you have to complete. Lastly, connect it to your network, verify connectivity. Let's jump to it. So here we have our IE3300, it's booted up, and the express setup LED is blinking. And you can see that here. This is an indication that the switch has no configuration and it's ready to go into the express setup mode. You will then take your paperclip like object, insert it into the express setup hole for two to three seconds, no more than five. One, two, three. One of the ports will start to blink, in this case, port one slash three. It's blinking because it's the first copper port. You notice that one and two are fiber ports and there's no expectation that you're gonna have a laptop fiber connection. So the first copper port will blink. You just insert your cable there. It will make a connection with your PC's laptop. And if your laptop is configured for DHCP on the Ethernet interface that you've connected to the switch, 
it will receive an IP address 192.168.1.1. For the rest of this, we're going to go to the actual web page where you're going to log in and then execute the express setup configuration. I've established an IP connection with my IE3300. I've been assigned uh, 192.168.1.1. I've pointed my browser at the switch, which is 1.254. And you're seeing this message here because it has to do with the certificates that are being sent out uh, by the switch, which is self-signed. And you should just at get this point, it's safe. As I stated earlier, the password is admin and the password is going to be the serial number. And it's on a sticker on the front. It is case sensitive. Here we go, the first page. In this case, I am going to continue to use the word admin. That's what my company uses for local passwords. And now I'm going to put in a password. Got to put it in twice. I'll let it sync. My device name is, I do not have an NTP server at this time. Now, some of these are optional fields, so you can opt not to do them. This is going to be my management settings, this is my basic settings page. We do not use one as my management VLAN in my company. We are going to use 101. And my IP address is 10.100.101.22. It's what I was assigned to this particular device. Uh, the mask is standard class C. So this is the router that my switch will be using to contact for management related activities to contact uh, other devices. Over here on the right, you'll see a brief explanation of what these fields are. So that's useful when you're trying to figure these things out. Um, as you can see, we've got a few more things to do. Now, what would I like, which interfaces would I like VLAN 101 to be a member of? And that would be my uplinks. So I'm going to drag my uplinks over. I may use either one or two. And, and uh, so at this point, um, I'm gonna drag them both over, but I don't have any of the downlinks selected. I don't want any of my downlinks to be members of my management VLAN. I got a few more management connections left to do. Uh, I want to keep Telnet disabled, that per my company standard, but I want to enable SSH. Um, and I work at Cisco. This is my domain name. You would have known this because this is part of your plan. Um, I want to keep VTP transparent per my company standard. And I'm not going to use SIP. We'll just we'll keep that disabled. One more thing to do. Um, am I going to use a data VLAN? Yes. So this, the data VLAN here is in reference to what am I going to use for my production network? And I'm not going to use 101. We're going to use 99. And we'll give it a name. Now, if I give it an IP address, it's going to create a SVI or a layer three interface on the IE3300 on VLAN 99. This is optional. And in this particular case, I don't need to put a layer three interface on my production VLAN. I'm just going to let the switch carry it through. Now um, I'm going to keep rapid spanning tree um, as the default. That's what we're using, bridge priority. And I'll just let the, uh, I could change the bridge priority here, but I'm going to just keep that the same. My next hop is a router anyway. So my spanning tree is going to be very small. Uh, general configuration. I'm not going to use domain name servers. I do have a syslog server. It's in a different subnet. Somewhere in the network. And then SNMP server, same thing. They're in the same data center, uh, conveniently located near each other. And we still use public, don't tell anybody. 
There. I've now uh, configured everything. I'm in my review. Just making sure that I've got things configured the way I would like. Submit. At this point, um, it says it's done. Day zero configuration complete. Now at this point, I could take my switch and I connect it to my network on my uplink. Uh, I should be able to connect with it on VLAN 101 on this IP address. Pretty simple. Again, stick to the plan. There's a lot of questions that you have to answer uh, to get this onto the network. Thanks for watching all the way to the end.